here, we have someone who used to work at Toyota <laughs> right here. So a pretty big Toyota fan. I've got a Toyota 1991 MR2 that I adore. So I'm not just closed-minded here, I'm very open-minded. So we really want to cover what's the better buy, the Tacoma or the Ranger. Of course, we're talking about the new models. And it, these are perfect demonstrations of covering whether it's better to buy new or used. Because yes, there is a bit of a car crisis going on right now, and it's been going on for two years, but there is definitely a used car crisis going on, causing used prices to still be quite high with high interest and actually you've got some new vehicles that you can get pretty decent interest on these days so it begs the question is it better to buy new or, is or, it, used. or used a lot of it depends on your <laughs> personal situation because both types uh, whether you buy new or used you can save thousands depending on your situation what you're going in with you know are you going in with cash are you going to be financing? Very important. Do you have a trade maybe that's clear and worth $20,000 on a $40,000 vehicle? These are very important aspects to consider to know whether you're better off buying new or used because you got to watch out for the interest. Previous financial director or FNI, uh, as we call them in the business, Marie knows all about interest rates and how they can cost you $5,000, 15, I think we've even seen $20,000 of interest hidden. It's hidden on a loan, right? When it says what your financed amount is, that does not include, folks, your actual cost of the interest. And you remember how to calculate the interest out, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, but normally the computer did it for me, so yeah. yeah. So the FNI, <laughs> easy. Uh, the FNI on their end sees how much interest is on the deal. Yeah. But when you look at your monthly payment... And on your contract, I guess, you can see what will be the amount you yeah. pay. The contract, once it's pretty much too late, you're, you're there <laughs> to pick up the vehicle. It's shined up. It's looking gorgeous. Your emotions get pumping. No one reads those contracts, quite frankly. And the people that do, they, mo they read all the wording and then skip over the actual numbers too quickly. At least that's what I've seen in my experience. And yeah, we've seen $20,000 of interest That's before. A lot. Yeah, in the time I was doing that uh, that kind of work, uh, we didn't have that much of a big interest like right now. So right now, I don't know how it could be, but it could, I'm afraid <laughs> to see the numbers. <laughs> yeah, basically you take your monthly payment mm. and you multiply it by the number of payments that you have. It's gonna give you a big old number. And then you look at the finance number because you're gonna subtract that finance number from your actual monthly payments times the number of payments. And unfortunately, a lot of people are financing 84 months. And when you have finance 84 months, one of these newer used vehicles at, you know, seven, eight, nine percent even 10% interest, you end up paying 10 to 20 some thousand dollars in interest. So you gotta calculate it. You, and you gotta know going in what's better for you. Where are you gonna save thousands, new or used? It depends on your situation. So we'll be covering those various situations and what's best off for you. Because well, I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. We've got Marie with us only on the lives. So she's that once a week treat. I get to see her once a week uh, for these lives. <laughs> I work a lot of hours. Yeah, we never see each other after that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I work a lot of hours, but this is our Monday night live. We get treated with Marie right here. And uh, yeah, she'll be here to help us out for sure in regards to all that financial stuff, as well as styling, because this, this lady's got style, folks. So <laughs> let's talk about this. Let's get right in. Let's put the pedal to the metal, because you all know I like to put the pedal to the metal. And if you do like the sounds of, you know, being part of a community, that actually helps each other out in the comments section. Instead of just tearing each other down, hit that th like button, the little thumb, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out, and join the live chats on our premieres as well as our lives. So let's get started. Better buy Tacoma or Ford Ranger. So we are talking about the 2024 Toyota Tacoma or the all new 2024 Ford Ranger. Now I'll try to get a different slide here because, uh, well, at least here it's good. 
you're you're hiding the ugly there. Oh, there we go. Let's you got to get rid of this slide. So let's let's get to some better looking stuff right here. Let's go over to the websites that we have here. So build and price. 23 is going to give us an idea of price. So we'll be, we will be talking price now. Look at these Toyotas. These brand new Toyota Tacomas. Tacos, as many people call them. There's a lot that has changed. Everybody loves tacos. Everyone loves tacos. <laughs> Thankfully, there's a lot that's changed on these models. The outgoing model was pretty old and archaic. It felt yeah. very analog not digital so you had a lot of very old buttons you had some things on the interior that dated back to the mid 1990s and i would not buy a previous model tacoma hmm. because you know what the ford ranger is unbelievably reliable it wins awards in its category for reliability so it's actually got awards given to it for three year reliability as long as as well as estimated long-term reliability. So it's a very reliable uh, model. So don't be fooled. A lot of people will think that the Ranger isn't reliable because you know they're thinking back to the maybe Ford in the 1990s. Ford's changed since the 1990s. And I know that's hard to believe if you're currently driving a Toyota Tacoma because whether it's a 1998 or a 2018 or even a 2023, there's going to be some buttons in there from the mid-1990s. But I am loving the new Tacoma. Love the new Tacoma. And uh, Marie, what do you think? Let's start on yeah, styling. My first impression, I like that they took almost the same look as the Tundra because uh, we saw one uh, when we were in uh, Florida. And it was big. The front was looking good. And I see they, they tried to uh, stay in the same uh, kind of look. So they, they fit in the Toyota line together. They are the little brother and big brother. <laughs> so yeah. That's perfect. They've got a good family look going on. Yeah. And uh, not the wrong type of family. That's not a inbreeding look. Uh, because <laughs> they do look good. But I have to say, as much as I find they look good, it has more Lexus styling to it. I'd say the Toyota Tacoma has a bit of Kung Fu fighting <laughs> style behind it. But the question is, is yeah, it... The little lines underneath the light. The little line. Yeah. Yep, that's right. <laughs> so it's got a little Kung Fu fighting style. <laughs> but the question is, is it fast as lightning? But <sighs> that's good because they didn't um, try to steal the look of another brand. They have their, their proper look. So I love that. Yeah. For that, I, yeah. Yeah, we, we like originality, <laughs> and this has its uh, an original Toyota Lexus look, but it's definitely, I feel, mm -hmm. Lexus influenced. Because if you go back Toyota 10, 15 years ago, everything looked very boring and very much the same, even if you went over to Lexus. And then Lexus started to kung fu fight with the style, and some people loved it, and some people were a little disappointed. Now, I'm happy because it's offering... You know, it's spicing things up. But the Toyota Tacoma definitely has some of that Lexus styling, and it even has a Lexus motor. So I asked the question, I made the point, it's Kung Fu fighting style, but it is, is it as fast as lightning? Well, let's check out these numbers, folks. These numbers, debatable numbers, I'm impressed for Toyota, huge increase, huge improvements, but only four cylinder engines. So if you go all the way up to the Trail Hunter or the TRD off-road, of course, as well as the Limited, so the high up trims, you're going to be getting the iForce Max motor. It's a hybrid. It's that original 2.4 liter force inline four cylinder with turbo from Lexus. Pretty potent, very reliable powertrain. They've gotten rid of the six, which had a little bit of reliability issues. The six cylinder, of course, they also got rid of their six speed transmission, which also had, I wouldn't call them reliability issues because the transmission transmission wasn't straight out breaking, but it was clunky. Had some hesitation, a little confused in, uh, in regards to what gear to be in. So it wasn't the best transmission. There were some complaint, a lot of complaints for that transmission. So you're looking at 326 horsepower and 465 pound feet of torque. Now, Marie, you have a hybrid truck. Mm -hmm. So you've got, tell us about what truck you've got. Well, yeah, I love it so much because you have uh, 
all the stuff, the positive stuff that you have with a, a truck. So you can uh, bring uh, things in the, the bed. Um, and with the hybrid, it's just fun because you don't uh, put that much fuel in it. Because <laughs> sometimes when you have a truck, you need to compromise and put more fuel in it. So that, or drive that's the best less. of both worlds. I'm cheap, so I just drive <laughs> less places. I'll be asked to go somewhere. Uh, you take another car because <laughs> this one is too uh, too expensive. It and if wants I, to eat a lot. <laughs> and if I only had a truck, well, I'd be motivated to stay in every mm -hmm. weekend and not go out. You know, we found ourselves going out. I think we went out three or four times today. And I didn't mind. And I even said, wow, this feels great. I'm leaving the house and it doesn't hurt my soul because I'm taking the lightning and it's free. So it feels good. So yeah. you like the hybrid experience. Yeah, um, probably I won't be able to go back to the 100% fuel. And this is why I'm thinking so much. <laughs> you're probably more, I'm thinking you're maybe a little bit more team to Toyota Tacoma. Uh, you know what? I don't know. I love that orange color though. <laughs> <laughs> don't pick it because of it the color. Pops. That's not fair now. <laughs> You're going to yeah, disappoint some people but here. You said it, it's a little bit Lexus, uh, Kung Fu fighting and stuff like that. But at the same time, I guess people that love Toyota, the brand, they will appreciate that it has a Lexus touch because for them, they, they can buy a Toyota with a little touch of Lux. So I guess that's a positive thing for them. That is well said. Uh -huh. and, and it's hybrid. I used to be the biggest Toyota <laughs> fan. I was a big old Toyota, Toyota boy. Growing up, you know, from the age of about 16 to about the age of 25, 26, I had enough repairs because I fell for the myth, the myth that a Toyota never breaks. And I put thousands of dollars into a whole bunch of Toyotas. I blew a motor on a Celica, just to give an example, twice. Uh, Is it the Celica the problem or the driver? <laughs> I lost my fifth gear on a Camry manual engine because I took a Camry V6 and had that in a Toyota MR2 and the tra I lost the fifth gear in the transmission and the synchros on the third gear were starting to go. I've had issues. I've had to do a lot of alternators, my Celica, two of my MR2s, but that aside, I used to be a big huge Toyota fan and I stopped because in the 2000s, while they were very reliable, generally speaking, they were pretty boring when it comes to styling. And it's part of the reason why I wouldn't go with the previous model Tacoma. You're liking the style. You also like the hybrid. So mm -hmm. this could be a good mid-sized truck for you. However, some complaints have been, even with the new model, rear seat spacing is going to be just a little bit limited, but it is made for tall people. Tall people fit really well in this Tacoma. Mm -hmm. You know, you're tall for a woman, but neither of us are above six feet. So even if I sit up here and give the, a wrong impression, none of us are above six feet. So height wise, plenty of space. Well, I think what's interesting with the Tacoma that we've got here is the box sizing. You can actually have, actually have, and you can see it right here. We've got it in writing. The SR5, for example, is available in double cab with a five foot or six foot bed. So you can actually have the big cab and a six foot bed. And I think that is pretty huge. However, unlike you, I'm less Tacoma for the new one because it does not come with a six cylinder. And I don't like the mm -hmm. old Tacoma's six cylinder those, you know, reliability complaints don't stress me out very much. What really bothers me is that it's a slow six cylinder with not enough power, but nonetheless, a lot of fuel consumption. So I'm loving the fuel, well, potential fuel consumption on this. Yeah, is it better now? Do you know? That's a great question. Official numbers, I haven't come across any official numbers yet. Mm, However, we'll see. <laughs> let's look at the Tundra. If you look at the Tundra hybrid, a lot of people complain saying there's not much of a difference whether it's hybrid or not. And the non-hybrid isn't that impressive. It's better than the, five, than the V8 they had, but it's still not that impressive. If you look over to the F-150 hybrid, the power boost, the big benefit is you get 500 pound feet of torque. A lot of power on the hybrid unit from Toyota as well. However, on the highway, next to no difference from either brand, in town, at Ford, you can save 30 to 40%, but you have to be very docile and gentle with 
that gas pedal. You got you to gotta really pamper it or baby it, whatever term you want to use. Drive it like a Prius. Drive, yeah, you don't drive it like it's hot and you don't drive it like it's stolen. You drive it like, you say Prius? Yeah. That's awfully cute. I say Prius. Prius? I don't know in English. No, no, no. In you French, start, it's Prius. <laughs> you continue with Prius. It's wonderful. We are, I don't know. We're an accepting community here. Lots of love going around. No oh, one's judging. Please correct me. No way. So I'm worried that the Tacoma Hybrid won't be that fuel efficient. I'm convinced, 100% convinced on the highway, next to no difference. And in town, I'd say, if it's like the Tundra, maybe we'll be saving 15 to 25%. Who knows, maybe I'll get surprised and it does actually save 30 to 40% fuel in town, but I will be very, very surprised. Now, I see in the comments section, people talking about wait times. And I know there have been a lot of complaints about wait times over at Ford. However, we just had uh, earlier, took a little break from all the pool work and gardening and our neighbor was talking about his wait times that he reviewed as well as other people that, um, that are employed. Uh, he, he, he supervises them. He's a boss, he's got employees and he said that various of his employees were complaining about, what was it? Uh, a Corolla. Yeah, long wait time in a Corolla, a Camry one year one year and a half. One year and a half on a Camry. That's a lot. And it's a Camry, folks. We're not, we're not, I didn't say Porsche or Lamborghini or Corvette. I said Camry. <laughs> and it wasn't a new model like the Maverick hybrid that we need to wait a lot because they cannot produce enough for everybody. Yeah. New models always bring more excitement, more <laughs> demand. Yeah, we saw it. <laughs> and, you know, that's something where I'd say don't be fooled. I've got, you know, in the comments section, people saying, you know what, Maverick, too long of a wait. I'm going to get a Ram 1500 because the interest rate is really low compared to the interest rate on a Maverick. First of all, you're, if you're looking at interest rates on the Maverick now, you got to realize that when it comes in, in a year, well, maybe six months if it's an EcoBoost, but you've got a good chance you're playing more around a year. If it's an EcoBoost, probably a little bit before. If it's a hybrid, probably a little bit more than a year but you're gonna to get to choose the interest rates of when it comes in. So if you truly believe that we're gonna be in a different economic position in a year and a half from now, you're gonna get those interest rates. So very important to consider. But for the Tacoma, to bring it back to the Tacoma, there are wait times at Toyota. So if you like this new Tacoma, be there day one ordering one up. Now, some, re some regions like ours aren't as, you know, hot for Tacomas for whatever reason, and you can probably pick one up. There's They have these at dealerships in our area. Not the new one, the 23. Then again, I wouldn't touch the 23. The inside is archaic, and the new model is going to be much more comfortable. Uh, and that's why this gets my actual seal of approval because the new model is going to have rear coil springs as long as you do not get one of the base models. Another big complaint people have with uh, Ford models sometimes, and this is true of any brand, but for whatever reason, whatever brand interests us, we seem to think that it only applies at that company. But I've read so many times in the comments like frustration that they're not getting more equipment on the XL or they're not making more of the XL. Well, here's the thing. Toyota, if you go with that SR, the base model, it's going to be pretty slim pickings. First of all, it's not the only model in which you can have a six-speed manual transmission, which is a reason why some people are going to choose the Taco. But if we were to actually look at the 23, it'll give us a really good idea. Starting price, 28250 So your 2024 Taco is going to cost roughly $3,000 more than that price right there. And it's probably going to continue getting roughly 20 to and 23 miles per gallon city highway. So if we go start to build this up. It's great, the website, you can always get a full detail of what the model comes with. And the base models at Toyota, the answer is not that much, but now for 24, a whole lot more actually, because you're gonna be getting a lot of standard safety features and actually a few more standard features, safety features than you do over on the Ford Ranger, which we'll get to the Ford Ranger in just a moment. 
but they're building website they're building price website i sometimes have you selected it and you need to go down next step why thank you <laughs> So let's build this up here. Basically, the point I want to make is on the SR model, you get three choices of color, black, white, and gray. So if you want to complain about not having, sad. that's sad, but it's not a reason to be like, oh, I hate Toyota, which I've heard so much about like the Ford. They'll go into the Ford Maverick. I remember when the cruise control wasn't offered on the XL, it was, you know, Ford is crooked and greedy because there's no cruise control on the XL. While well, they added it, <laughs> But we need to get less worked up about these things. Companies need to make money to survive. If they don't survive, we're not getting models offered by them. Of course, there is a certain limit to all of that. But the SR model has a 23, pretty awful, 159 horsepower and 180 pound-feet of torque. And that was sort of the, the calling card or the hallmark of Toyota for years. They had a lot of power in the 90s, some very interesting model and that models, and then throughout the 2000s, next to no power, and they were boring. Uh, but now we're back to having exciting styling and some exciting engine choices with actual power. Well, less so, less so in the engine choice department, but more so in the power department. So the SR5 in 2024 continues to be a, a less powerful model, but you could at least add on that V6 engine, 278 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque, both the horsepower and the torque being made really high up on the RPM ba uh, band. So 6,000 RPM to get your, your 278 horsepower and 4,600 RPM, that's revolutions per minute of the motor, 265 pound-feet of torque, but you really have to get up to 4,600 RPM. So pretty boring when you first step on the pedal. So that's what was going on, and next to no choices on the SR5, they absolutely want to force you into more, more equipment. So let's go back to where we were at over here. Power-wise, the SR continues to be to have less power, but still a huge increase in power. 270 pound-feet of torque, 310, 270 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, four-cylinder turbocharged engine. So similar to Ford's, the Ford Ranger 2.3. So you get that, you get that iForce 2.4 liter turbocharged engine as standard, and a lot of the issues, new transmission. So hopefully, it's not going to be all clunky. It's longer, so longer wheelbase with coil springs in the back if you don't take the base model and disc brakes. So you're going to have a vehicle that's going to perform better off-road. You're going to have a vehicle that's actually more comfortable, a lot more comfortable because of the longer wheelbase, but because of the new upgraded suspension, independent suspension on all four wheels, you're going to have a vehicle that handles a lot more, better, a lot better, and the seat is one inch higher so folks the tacoma is not a bad machine mm -hmm. but would would we which one would we pick i know you like the hybrid let's go check out that ford ranger <laughs> so on the ford ranger here what i really like is if you go to the xlt sport is now so good looking sport model is now standard so that's your fx4 the sport looks quite similar but this sport look is now the standard XLT, even on the 300, but we do have some sacrifices to make. Ford is reducing the number of variations, all the, so many thousands of variations, sometimes even millions of variations could exist on certain models such as the F-150. And guess what? 2023, 2024, and moving forward, we're gonna see less available options. So your Ranger now, you're getting it only with a five foot bed and you're getting it as a big four door the big cab now a lot of people are going to be happy this appeals to the vast majority some people are going to be disappointed they don't have that traditional truck like you can get over on the tacoma you can get a manual two door out of the tacoma so that's i'd say if you're looking for a real traditional truck go with the tacoma you can pick it out. It's going to be your pre-runner. You're going to get some style. Pre-runner right here. You're getting a four-cylinder, which I'm a little iffy on, but you're getting 
some style sorry for the little background play moving around there so you can get that with your with your two door and six foot bed now if you want that manual go all the way down to the sr so that's available with the manual but if you're willing to take that try test out their new eight speed transmission go with the trd pre-runner it's a good bang for buck because guess what at toyota the price is going to go up very very quickly just to give you all an idea if we go back here we look at the trd pro for example trd pro starts at forty seven thousand six hundred and eighty five for the 20 that's for the 2023 so add an extra three to four grand for that 2024 and a lot of people have asked have said i hope the trd pro comes fully equipped at that price and it does not so just quickly before we jump into that trd pro trail special edition 41,400 limited 41,000 trd off-road i think that's good value too 36,440 or the trd sport 35,160 add three to four grand for the 2024 models and yes you definitely can add added options once you get in there it's all the way in the packages but no packages available for the 2023 you can add accessories and sorry when i said add packages a lot of dealerships are going to want to add things onto these models and you're going to have to take those add-ons now if it's things like running boards for example that's fine but if you're paying a fortune for an anti-theft system or a uh, paint protection in the front you don't want to walk out of there with seven thousand dollars of you know overpriced added on accessories so just watch out for that folks you do i do want you all to save thousands of dollars so now over to the ranger the sport model is now standard on the xlt i think that's going to be the real bang for buck i'd put my vote of confidence on that now marie looking at the ranger style tell us what you think who yeah. do you prefer here <laughs> that that's perfect that both of uh, toyota and ford changed the uh, the look of their car the same year it's a lot of competition both were due yeah but i really love the ranger now before i wasn't a fan just because of the round look of the front that was uh, going down, if I could say that like that. And now it's square, it looks more like an F-150. Uh, it's a good mix with the biggest of the F-150 and the style of the Maverick. So yeah, now I love it. Uh, they just need to have an hybrid in it and it will be uh, all good. So I, I love the look and you know, uh, because I'm with you now, I, I'm only buying Ford, so <laughs> I really, um, how can I say that in English? Um, I put my trust in Ford all the time, so yeah, for sure, if I hesitate on these two brands, I will go with Ford because I drive a lot of Ford before. We've had some very high mileage Fords before yeah. we met. You had an Escape that was getting yeah. quite old in the my long the tooth ever. and old. It was a 2008 <laughs> Escape. And mechanically it was bulletproof had a bit of rust issues mind you there's a lot of yeah. stones and a lot of salt on the roads up here uh m pujo reminded everyone to watch out for that uh, nitrogen tire fill for 700 dollars when it's worth you know 50 60 dollars uh, yeah. there's about a 30 dollar cost <laughs> behind that so you That's can tell with the new ranger you've got the led performance mm. c clamp lights so very stylish design very similar to what you'll see sort of the styling off the lights off the f-150 the super duty uh, the maverick so that's now the signature family ford look and it's standard on lariat as well as the raptor now we do have ranger news in regards to what models are actually going to be available the sport of course right on when it comes to that's what you get as soon as you jump up to the xlt so i think that's very very good value so you've got ford trail control toyota also has their cruise control you could say for off-roading so it's a very slow speed cruise control however the previous toyota mo model was a little clunky I've tried both the toyota tacoma was a little clunky previously but probably a lot of that had to do with the disc brakes in the back dating from the 1980s and ford had sorry the drum brakes dating from the 1980s the ford ranger had discs and the ford trail control on the ford ranger does work it's fantastic and you can go to uh, 
very, very low speeds, and it just does a great job. It takes care of the gas, it takes care of the brake, you're in charge of the steering wheel. So we'll have to find out the Tacoma, I think their system will have improved quite a bit since they've ditched the drum brakes and have now gone on to uh, onto actual disc brakes. So Toyota Tacoma, welcome to the 2020s. <laughs> You're 20 years late for the disc brakes, but that's fine. I remember back in the day, you're looking at a Ford Escort and even while well, the GT had disc brakes and other models didn't. So everyone wanted a Ford Escort GT. Now, you'll still of course have your FX4 off-road package at Ford. That can be thrown off. That's an amazing value because whether you're looking at the Maverick, the F-150, the Ford Ranger, any Super Duty, any F-150, you can throw on the FX4 package. It varies in price, but it's always under a thousand. It's, well, in the Maverick, it's a little bit more. It's right around a thousand, plays right around a thousand dollars. But on the F-150 and Super Duty, you can throw it on for next to nothing. It gives you the steel plates underneath the vehicle to protect your oil pan, all your sensitive bits mm -hmm. get covered up. It's the truck's jock strap. <laughs> and it's got a little button in the dash so that if you're going downhill, the transmission is going to help keep your speed. Now, why would we ever want that? Well, we want that if you're going down a very uh, steep hill for a very long period of time, you can actually overheat your brakes. With that button, hill descent control, you'll protect your, your vehicle from overheating those brakes and end up just going straight when you actually want to you know, slow down or control your speed. So that's a great little package right there. Now the Ranger, the interior of the Tacoma has upgraded incredibly. So has the Ranger. It's very impressive because even the XL comes with a 10 inch screen. So let's check that out. There's your XLT Sport right there. I actually prefer the Ranger because two main reasons. I like the the truck styling. This isn't Kung Fu fighting. This is more traditional truck with a little modern, a few modern touches to it. So you've got the lights that help, you know, modern it up, but it's still, the grill looks very much like the a traditional too, truck. The bags too, they modern it up. It looks more like uh, the mags on my Maverick right now. I love it. The side vents here mm -hmm. also is a nice little po touch point to modernize the look. So You've got a whole lot of little factors making this truck look new and modern, but the overall overall truck looks very truck. It's not, you know, it's not boring upon, let's say, Mustang styling, uh, which, you know, the, our 2022 Mustang GT has a lot of sharp angles in, in it. It's a little bit more kung fu fighting <laughs> like the TRD. So the Ranger, I do prefer the styling. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely more on the, I, I, I'm, you know, I have nothing against the Tacoma styling. I like it quite a bit. I really appreciate it. It's a very, very close second. And I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I preferred the Tacoma until we found out that the V, well, until it was confirmed because we've known for, I've said to Marie, must've been six or eight months ago, hey, Ford's, there are rumors at Ford saying that we're going to get an optional six cylinder. So you can get the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 on the XLT. You can't have it for the XL, but you can have it on the XLT. And that is incredible bang for buck. I don't expect it to be very expensive as an option. It is a fantastic engine option. Why don't you tell them while I play around here, why don't you tell them how you enjoyed and appreciated your 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 off of the Bronco? Yeah. Uh... It was super powerful. It was impressive. Uh, so you go quick at the the, the mileage that you want, and it's not. Um, we don't uh, hear it force when you you hit the pedal. So yeah, it was uh, it was smooth and easy. I love it pretty much, and I love the interior uh, of the Ranger. There, it's uh, you don't mind the long no. vertical sc screen. No, because we had it in the Lightning, and now it's. Mm, yeah, we weren't sure at first. It's easy. But now that we have it <laughs> and have lived with it, we love it. And there's things about the Lightning that we just don't care about. That up and down automatic tailgate, couldn't care less. I generally prefer to actually, you know, get a little bit of a bicep workout and actually close my own tailgate. It's not as if it's heavy. It's an but aluminum tailgate. When I came from the grocery store and I have the bag on, on my shoulders, it's easy to push the bottom and <laughs> it. 
when you push the button, it, it goes up. So yeah, if you have a full stuff in your hand and you don't want to come back to just close it after, it's a, it's a good feature, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> now over at Toyota, we've got a new interior. So I want to get to actually yeah, showing that off. That. Compare it to the Rangers interior, but their website, you can't just <laughs> click on it and get more. So they're making it a little difficult for me here. Let's give them a second chance here. I don't want updates, but I do want what's called gallery right here. So good looking exterior truck. Mm -hmm. It's really going to come down to personal taste, whether you're more Ranger styling or Tacoma styling. Now I find when you go up in grade at the, on the Tacoma, if you spend a lot, you get a lot of wow. I don't find the base model very wow. The pre-runner passes, the TRD Sport very much so passes, but the Pro, they really tempt you into spending a lot of dough on the Pro, because, you know, who doesn't like a hood scoop? You know, I'm trying to zoom in, the site won't let me, but who doesn't like a hood scoop? And you get that on the TRD Pro. You also have the Trail Hunter for all those overlanding fans, and I'd say, don't, you know, if you think you're going to buy a mid-range Tacoma and then set it up to do overlanding, you're going to spend more. Ask any Jeep owner who's tried to set, you know, modify their Jeep. They'll spend so much more money modifying their Jeep than just, unless, you know, you're, unless you're reasonable with the modifications. But if you're going to try to go full out for overlanding, just get the Trail Hunter. You'll get it in your resale. And of course, both vehicles, you can have skid plates. But something that's driving me up the wall crazy with the Tacoma is that where are the tow hooks in the front? There should be four tow hooks on this, front and back, and they're just, there aren't. Now, the rear suspension finally being on coils and not leaf, fantastic. Way to go, Tacoma. This is going to be very comfortable, and both trucks have a fully boxed-in frame. Now, the Ford Ranger, it's seven transversal bars attaching going through the frame welded on both sides i've got experience with that our bronco had that frame and off-roading very very solid and because the bronco had independent four-wheel suspension very comfortable fantastic on the road so i'm expecting both these vehicles to be actually very nice improvements over their current models and they kept the interior very modern, but you've got the traditional styling for a screen. Both have base models with nice touch screens, but uh, it all comes down to whether you want your screen vertical or horizontal. Do you have a preference when it comes to those two? I don't think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, both of them, while you're using it, you, you will be able to... Um... How can we say that in English? I'm searching the word tonight, sorry. Um, you get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a pe an adaptation period, mm -hmm. especially if you're going, you're a current Toyota owner, maybe your Tacoma is 10 years old and, you know, may not even have, it probably doesn't even have a touchscreen inside. So the Tacoma's got nice little treats. Some, a lot of people are mentioning, of course, the six foot bed, the manual and the power up and down rear tailgate. This is a mid-sized truck. These tailgates aren't heavy, folks. I wouldn't buy a vehicle just because it has tailgate, and I'm just really not using it on the Lightning. I would have rather paid less money and not have that option. Now, the TRD has something that is pretty tempting. These off-road seats, the TRD Pro, TRD Pro only, has these seats that have what is basically shocks. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can go off-roading all day of course these seats are one inch higher than they used to be so you're no longer sitting on the floor with your legs almost straight out mm -hmm. huge improvement talking about the legs um gary uh wants to know if you have more driver leg space in the tacoma 2024 than the 23 to answer that i'm going to need uh, <laughs> me the media specifications for both vehicles because even i wouldn't even park the two beside each other and try one versus the other and then call it out i really do feel that in both cases it's really important to look at um, the exact cubic inch volume of those spaces. So a little trick for you all, if you're looking for really specific details like that, early on, look up, you know, you type in Toyota Tacoma, 2024 Toyota Tacoma media specs. Mm. 2024 Ford Ranger 
media specs. So with media specs, usually you kind of get like a cheat sheet to all the super detailed information, um, which is kind of, it's like a cheat sheet. It feels like an engineer's uh, wet dream. <laughs> numbers everywhere. <laughs> so uh, the sound system on the Ranger, we'll see. But the Toyota Tacoma might very well have, using JBL, might have more points but remember the jbl is great but you're going up to the higher trim models if you go to bang and lufson at fourth we love the bang and lufson on our lightning i don't see how it could be much better without you know making my ears bleed <laughs> and you hear like you said the other day you hear all the different instruments mm -hmm. it's not just this loud bass and you're like oh this sounds great because you know you're 18 years yeah. old and you like bass and you want the little honeys to hear you no you hear all the instruments it's a quality sound yeah that's so special it's like surrounding you and you hear every parts of the music yeah we'll have to try out the jbl to see where it's at but uh you could have your little removable speaker, so a nice little wow. treat there. That's cool. So that's your Tacoma. Going back to the Ranger, I can give some major advice. <laughs> oh, uh, Gary is pointing out that front leg space never seems to be a stat. No, they often, you're right, uh, they're not talking about um, profondeur. Uh, depth they're often talking about overall volume so you kind of need the the volume number and actually try it out that's why when we first i first could get my hands on a maverick i did a video you know three men sitting in the back seat <laughs> being like hey everybody three men fit in the back seat tight here that we're going to close the doors now we're all touching shoulder to shoulder but we're three men and one was six foot and the other one was a little over six foot, so we all fit in. Yeah. So yeah, it's always look, better to try it. <laughs> always better to try it out. Now the 2024 Ranger, some really now I got this from I'm not, you know, stealing anything from Ford. This was on Ranger 6G. I can tell you, if you want to get your Ranger and you want an XL and you want to get it quickly, be one of the very first in line because for the moment. 2024 Ranger XL production should actually be roughly 6% of the overall production. Now, there have been some videos claiming that Ford is only building the upper trim models and that, you know, this is really crooked, that Ford, you know, they're only building high profit models like the F-150 and not building any Mavericks. That's just not true. And we see how not true it is. The Ranger, yes, it's 6% production slated for the XL model but roughly 56% for the XLT. And then the remaining percentage, roughly 36%, are gonna be Lariat model trucks. So if you want, if you're getting an XLT and you know, you're week one, week two, week three, even maybe we'll see how it goes, but the XLTs will be the last to sell out because they're the biggest percentage. The XLs will sell out really, really quickly because companies are going to be putting in orders for straight XLs. They'll take them white. It's going to be very simple. So keep that in mind. If you want an XL, try to get a pre-order in. If the if your local dealerships, if any of your local dealerships will take pre-orders in so that they can drop yours in the morning of or your you know, morning 9 a.m., you've got an appointment and you know what you're going to buy, just be like, this is what I'm taking. Well, of course, remember, get a signed build sheet that says if you get a 2024, it's going to be that price. And get a lease offer or purchase offer that shows the interest rate, shows the monthly payment, shows the total financed amount or the total cash amount. Get them to sign it, sign it, and you get you need to keep your copy because that's your protection so that later on you're getting that interest rate and price. So... We've got Super Crew all over on the new Ranger. It's a little one point less for the Ranger versus the Tacoma. You have less choice, but when you have less choice, there's less cost of production and Ford can do things such as give Sport, the model we all want, and generally everyone wants a Sport styled truck. Well, that's now standard. So that is very cool. So let's look over here at what we can have. Now the models that are gonna be there are XL, XLT, Lariat and Raptor. So no wild track, no six foot bed, no manual. And speaking of the about the Raptor, um, GM Genoa wants to know if normally is it only one Ranger Raptor allocated per, per dealership? Some dealerships are going to get none. 
And some yeah. dealerships will get, you know, four, five, six. So you, that's a good, great question to ask the dealer that you're shopping at. Maybe you want to grab the phone or by email, contact a few. Now, Ridgeview says we've got a great question oh, here. that's the one. <laughs> oh, okay, great. So yeah, that is a, fa that is a great question. Uh, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to answer it and trusting me in my with my responses. Now, an XL, this is incredible. The XL Ranger comes standard with a 10-inch display in the center stack. That is a big touchscreen. And you've got an 8-inch digital instrument cluster. So it's not analog, which would be, you know, mechanical needles. An 8-inch digital instrument cluster means everything is electric, kind of like that 1985 uh, Trans Am that I had. Uh, everything was electric. Corvettes came out that way. It was a fun time with those 80s model vehicles. No power, but it, they were pretty cool just the same. So other things that are interesting about the XL is you can have now an S, the 2024, you'll have an STX appearance package. That's going to be very cool, very affordable. It will bring it pretty close to the price of an XLT. And remember, XL, they're only going to be building 6% of the total pr production. That's the plan at the moment. 6% of the total production going towards the XL. So either be first in line or order an XLT. <laughs> I think the XLT is going to be a great value because over on the XLT here, and I think it's great. I want to mention on the XL, you can even add Copilot and have all your, you know, you can add the STX appearance package, which is going to be very desirable. No matter what, it's a four door, big cab, five foot box, no choice of engine. You get the 2.3 liter, four cylinder inline four with turbo that we're all very used to. But remember, companies are going to be jumping all over these. So, Get in line, folks. Get in lines. Even the running boards, they're optional. Now, let's see here. Anything else before getting off the XL that we need to cover? You've got shock absorbers on the XL. They're on the outside of the frame. That does add better comfort and less dancing around. But the rear, you still have, of course, leaf springs. And advanced driver system, assistance systems. Remember, under the standard equipment, in standard, you've got headlamps that are automatic on off. You have high beams, high and low beams at night. That is actually standard. You've got pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking, pedestrian detection, forward collision warning, and dynamic brake support, all standard. Uh, rear camera, of course, standard. Cruise control is standard and lane keeping aid meaning it helps when you start to go out in the lines, it's gonna shake your steering wheel and give you just a little bit of assistance. So that's fantastic. And post-collision braking, you make a contact, you bounce off, you've passed out, or you're panicking, the vehicle's gonna break for you. So actually, even points between the Tacoma and the Ranger, they both have incredible standard safety equipment. Now what's cool is on the Ranger XL, you can upgrade that for more the Copilot 360 package, you can add more safety to that. So it'll be real nice once the building price is up. This week, you're gonna be able to order these probably around, I think the 26th, but you know, stay tuned. We'll uh, post it for everybody. But you do have, uh, you do have added technology you can add on the XL. So no one's being forced into having to get the XLT and I think that's great. Now this whole Ford accessories, don't throw that on your order. If you throw Ford accessories on your order, uh, they're very li it very likely will cause your delays on your order. Just get them from the parts department when your vehicle shows up. That was the case for the Maverick. I called it well in advance. Back, way back summer 21 some people called me crazy and i said just avoid it i had seen that it had been issues for the f-150 and for the super duty so i'm predicting yet again the ranger avoid your accessories to you know get your maverick sooner i know for a long time we weren't getting selected because we had you know we wanted the spray in bed liner and we wanted that tonneau cover mm-hmm now, here's that XL added package you can throw on. Ford Copilot 360, you can have, let's see down here, F is fleet only option. So if you are fleet, well, you can go full out on the safety. You can have the reverse brake 
assist, digital rear view camera, reverse parkade. They all have a rear view camera. So don't be fooled, folks. But you can have um, lane keeping system with um, extra assistances, which is the alert and driver alert system. You can have the blind spot detection and, of course, the auto high beam headlamps, which is odd because just earlier we saw that under standard equipment. So we'll have to get to the bottom of that story because when you see standard equipment back there, standard <laughs> Uh, didn't mean to zoom in that much. Sorry. Do you see, it? Giving, <laughs> do you see it, folks? Yeah, standard means it's there. And we definitely had most of what was on that right there. Advanced driver system, assistance systems. So unless that's under an added category, which it is not. So that's great. So don't know quite know what's going on there, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be standard. You see, you know, Bronco Sport, a lot of the models now at Ford are coming with just incredible safety features. Now the XLT, that's going to be roughly 56% of production. So if you want to get one sooner, go with an XLT. A lot of people, probably style-wise, we're going to look at an XL STX and, all, and barely come in under the price of an XLT. Just jump on the XLT, you get Sport now, standard, advanced driver assistance systems, all included so you get the ford copilot 360 so of course that's auto high beam headlamps bliss which is the little detector light lights in the rear side view mirrors that light up when someone's in someone's in your blind spot you can get cross traffic alert you're backing up someone's coming it's going to scream at you you get lane keeping assistance lane keeping alert lane keeping aid driver alert all that pre-collision and post-collision safety features. So even um, braking, if it detects you're definitely going to have an accident, it'll actually apply the brakes for you. Reverse park aid, that's a little beep, beep, beep when you back up. So you're getting a lot. Uh, and, Rev and the 400 watts in the bed. Rev Nation is asking, with XLT, uh, do you have a luxury package? That is a fantastic question. We'll get to that in just a moment okay. uh, as we <laughs> scroll down. But with, what is great, here's the proof. You are getting the sport appearance package. So that's going to be 17-inch gray painted aluminum wheels. You get the grill, gray painted center bar and surround. So basically you get the sport on a little decal on the box. But let's show that. That is right. We saw it earlier. It's Pretty much this, but that's FX4, so more black. The, the Sport, we just saw it go by. The front of the Sport there. You get your gray bar here. You get your gray bar going down and across. Light gray at the bottom. So very good looking. So that yeah. is definitely your Sport model. You get those amazing mags. So I'd say, folks, skip the XL. Jump right to the XLT. That is the one <laughs> to get. That's the value right there, folks. And you're also getting Sync 4A. So Sync 4 means your cell phone, you don't have to plug it in to have the GPS, your maps from here, your GPS, your navigation, your maps. They can go right to the screen. The screen, the technology in the vehicle is strong enough to be able to take those wireless transfers. So I'd put my money on the XL. Now talking about sort of like a luxury to answer the question about the mm -hmm. luxury group. Now let's check it out. Well, you do have what's called the high package. So carried over from the F-150, your high package, terminology from the F-150, insider people will be calling the calling it the 300 or the 301. Well, your 301, yes, you can have it. It'll give you 10-way power driver adjustable seat, including power lumbar for the driver, eight-way power passenger seat, adjustable seat, including power lumbar, heated front seats. So the 301 is going to be desirable in our northern regions for all those that want those heated seats. You're going to have power sliding rear window, 12-inch display in the center stack, so that huge uh, vertical screen, and you're going to have dual zone electric climate control. So we don't have to fight over what temperature it is. No couples arguments here. So that is the 301 package will definitely be desirable and sought after. Now, what else can we cover here? You can have the 2.7 liter with uh, 315 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque. And that's for me what makes it a winner for this very small difference. I'm sure between your T Tacoma's hybrid four cylinder sounds pretty decent 
versus the 2.7 liter, which sounds great. And if you change the exhaust, it has an unbelievably good sound. Basically, the Raptor tunes into that. The Raptor, with its active exhaust, really shows you what a six cylinder at Ford can sound like. Well, guess what? Buy a 2.7 liter, swap your exhaust, save a ton of money, thousands and thousands of dollars, and you're gonna have an amazing sounding Ranger. Just don't send me the bill if you get pulled over by the cops for making too much noise, <laughs> uh, folks. I'm not responsible for what comes out of my mouth. Please don't blame me when you get pulled over. All I can say is if I can get my hands on another 2.7 liter Bronco this time, I'll be changing that exhaust because my next Bronco, I want it to be my long-term Bronco. So long-term for you is it uh, one year only? <laughs> <laughs> Very long-term is two years. Ooh. Tim Bartz is in the house from Long MacArthur, Tim Bartz. The legend, thank you very much uh, for showing up. Really appreciate it. Uh, always helping out in the chat as well as outsider reviews, mm -hmm. helping out in the chat and Ridgeview, Marine Vet. And thank you to all our members for making these shows possible. Now, what else is optional? Well, what I like is the XLT. You don't have to go all the way to you know, a TRD Pro to get all your cool stuff. We've seen in the past, you could have a tremor package on, essentially it was a tremor package added to an XLT. And here you can see you know, white and black, optional, even on the 300, so on your standard XLT, you can have, as an option, advanced towing package plus technology. Uh, throwing in the trailer brake controller. So that's a first for the Ranger. You can get the trailer brake controller from factory. You can get the pro trailer. It comes with the pro trailer backup assist. It comes with the re reverse park aid with trailer guidance, adaptive cruise control and stop and go and speed sign recognition, front parking sensors, 360 degree camera, enhanced active park assist and connected built in navigation for three years. That's the connected part, the smart aspect to it, the one that talks with the internet. So I love the fact that at Ford, you know, we're not, ble they're not, I, I feel in the Tacoma, you kind of have to get bled into the whole TRD high price scenario to start play ar playing around with a lot more luxury. Whereas here you get the high package, boom, huge screen. Your vehicle looks like, you know, looks like our $110,000 Ford Lightning. So it's going to have a lot of style at low price. The XLT is, I know I've studied this and I, I've got to say my money's on the XLT. That is your big bang for buck. It's an incredible value. And I think it's one of the things that helps put my money on the Ranger more so than the Tacoma. And Tacoma is great at, you know, getting you to go up to that pro. You get those that seat with the back suspension. You get the red seats, it looks great, but they're really getting you to pay a whole lot more money. Mm -hmm. and That's that, a big difference. And even for style, you gotta pay a lot of money to get the nice style on the Tacoma. Let's go back to the mm -hmm. Tacoma and go all the way, that's the 23, so let's try to get back to the 24 out of that little gallery. So based on what we've been talking about so far. Are you starting to have a bit of a preference? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> I see that we have more um, uh, cute features in the, the Ford Ranger. So maybe the, the Ranger will be the big winner for tonight for me. <laughs> because you know? you're very, very price conscious. Yeah, because I don't want to, play, to pay that much for a Toyota when you can have all these cool features with the, the Ford at the less price yeah so unfortunately i'm sorry i've lost but the pricing but we'll go back to right here <laughs> when we're here and if we can actually just go back if they let me back out of yeah, what we've done it's, um, stuck on the, the pro. build on the pro so you need to go there thank you <laughs> it was really stuck there okay so <laughs> Picking out the Tacoma here, you can look, they're really pricing you up. Oh, it's the 2023 again. Yes, that's okay because we don't have 24 pricing yet. And you've <laughs> got an incredible start price at 28250 The 24 is going to be three to $4,000 more. But then you look at the SR5 and the SR5 is missing a bit of style. And honestly, you need to at least go 
$8,000 up from the base to a TRD off-road. Now there isn't an $8,000 difference between a Ford Ranger XL and an XLT. There really is not going to be an $8,000 difference. But even then, probably you're going to be more TRD, well, off-road or sport. They're basically the same price, but let's check it out. Oh, well, I want to check it out, but they're not making it easy for me. I think it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm the problem here. <laughs> uh, they're not giving me, giving us very much photos, but we can definitely see more into the equipment. But that's when you're starting to get like uh, heated exterior mirrors. Uh, you're getting more options that make the vehicle a little more comfortable, kind of like an XLT over at, on the Ford Ranger. So I think you're very price conscious, mm -hmm. which would lead you to probably going with an XLT 300. I like a little, little, little luxury. So I'd very much be a Ford Ranger XLT 301 mm -hmm. with a V6. And if it wasn't for the V6, these two would be dead on. And maybe even the Tacoma would have a bit of an advantage because of, you know, having that six foot bed as an option, I think is really cool. Having the manual as an option, I think is a really cool feature. I love the TRD Pro, but I also love the Raptor, or really just an XLT with a 2.7 liter, because I feel if you have a 2.7 liter XLT Ranger, you're going to be way down on price. You change the exhaust out, you throw on some bigger tires, you give it a two inch lift, and you're going to have like a very cool truck, folks. <laughs> and you're going to be so far away from that TRD Pro pricing of $47,685. You're going to come in thousands of dollars less on the Ranger. If you don't believe me, try it out. Build a 2023 Ford Ranger. Swap up. You know, build your, take your XLT 2023 Ford Ranger. Look at the price. Realize it's going to be about $3,000 more roughly for the new model. And then just figure out what some tires are going to cost. Because now the sport model is standard. The mags look great on the Ranger. You get to keep those. I would personally keep those mags right there. Mm -hmm. I throw on bigger tires, give it a lift, swap out the exhaust, take the 2.7 liter So you want engine. a monster truck. <laughs> I, I want a monster truck for cheap. I want to look good, impress the neighbors. And it's really, I, I don't want life to be boring. And when you've got a boring vehicle, you've got a boring life, folks. You know, you got to... I'm thinking probably back to the, the slap chop guy, but you don't want to have a boring life. When I get outside my house, I like to see good looking vehicles. Every morning you think I'm waving bye to you and you think I'm like, oh, there goes my beautiful wife. I'm just looking at the Maverick go. I'm like, look at that Maverick. It looks so good. It looks so good. Now I would prefer because it's me. You like the fuel economy. You like the price savings. I'd prefer a Ranger with a bit of V6 growl, with a modified exhaust mm -hmm. and some big tires. And I, we know what happens when you have a, a car that is more boring, you just switch it oh. too quickly. <laughs> If it's boring, I'll take an $8,000 hit on it. Now the Lightning isn't boring, so I'm not taking an $8,000 hit on it because I know if I advertise right now, my Lightning's advertised and the person that picks it up is in a situation because of interest rates, they will save roughly $18,000, a little over $18,000. So they could take over my lightning. I'm asking for seven in return, 7,000. Now, if I remove that 7,000 and my monthly payment is $400 less, I'm sure that thing's going to go quick, but then I'd lose the original $7,000, well, $8,300 cash, but it was in the reduction box from my trade. So it's actually $7,300. That's from my previous Bronco because it basically didn't depreciate, depreciate. I lost $2,500 over you know, 14, 15 months. And I'm like, no, I'm not willing to lose $7,000 because the Lightning is very cool. Very cool. So we'll talk more about you know building up the right ranger we've got a lot of time for this but we're you know we've just crossed over an hour on the live session so <laughs> that now concludes toyota tacoma versus ford ranger mm -hmm. now let's get to the other this the second and third part of the show they're going to be pretty quick episodes so let's start it right up i've got to get down into the photos here all right so 
So sorry about that. We've got Winston upstairs wishing he was part of the action. We've got Lily down here with us. So folks, now we're going to be talking about, you know, is it better to buy new or used? Not a huge topic, but I've got advice to really save you thousands. We've got Marie here, financial director at Toyota back a few years ago. So she knows all about the dangers of interest rates. And right now, used vehicles have high interest rates. And some Ford models, if you're looking at 2022 or 2023 Ford models, of course, 2024 at Ford does not occur in spring 23. That's crazy. But it's what the Japanese companies, the Asian companies generally do. They'll have the next year's model show up in spring or summer of, a, they're like six to 10 months early. I've seen one year Mazda was so desperate, it was February, and they were coming out with the next year's model. That just reeks of desperation to me, even <laughs> though I think some Mazdas are fantastic. You don't want to be desperate, even if you got a fantastic product. So the Ford 24s aren't out yet, but the 23s, you got some amazing interest rates. And the interest rates that are going to be amazing are the models that you see in inventory, such as the F-150, the Ford Edge, the Ford Mustang. So... If you're interested in a Ford, shop your Fords. And if you're interested in any model on the market, I suggest and recommend if you're going to be financing or leasing, go new because you have the possibility to get a much better interest rate. Now, the GMC 1500 has a very good interest rate on it in our area right now. And I wouldn't, you know, it's not a truck that I would say avoid, but you know, to someone saying they're looking to get a truck in a year, year and a half, but they don't want to order a Maverick because currently interest rates are high on the Maverick. Yes, because it is not available. People complain when they, if Ford over advertises the Maverick when there aren't any available right now, people complain. They say Ford shouldn't advertise it if it's not available right now. Well, one way to kind of calm down demand is to have that interest rate a little higher. But when your Maverick comes in, if it comes in in a year, a year and a half, you get to pick that new interest rate as well, though, as the new price, the price that it is that month, you have a chance to get that better interest rate if interest rates are better. But if you want a guaranteed interest rate that's better and you want to save thousands and you are going to be financing or leasing, buy a new vehicle, folks. But be careful. Mm -hmm. Make sure the interest rate isn't low because, you know, the vehicle is unwanted. Often unwanted models are because of reliability issues or reputation issues mm. or just bad depreciation. Remember, manufacturers reduce interest rates as a form of incentive. So we need to ask, why is that incentive there? So for years, I've always asked, why are Ram 1500s 15 to 20% off? And I'd say that's the biggest one that bothers me on the market right now. You've got Ram 1500s all over the place. The classic model, the 20 year old model, always seems to have 15 to 20% off in rebates, but now they've come out with a very low interest rebate. Dodge does not have its own financing department. They don't, they, when they had their near bankruptcy, they lost the ability to finance people. So they're not financing people on their own money. So when you get a low interest rate from Ram, from Jeep, Dodge, it's because the manufacturer is paying a bank to give a better interest rate. So it's kind of a fake low interest because one month they'll be 15 to 20% off. And then the next month, oh wow, they're advertising this incredible interest rate. It's still, you know, it's, it's still a truck that there's a lot on the market because they're having trouble selling it. So you need to ask yourself, is there a reason why the model is hard to sell? What's my resale value going to look like? Now, resale value is the issue with a lot of new vehicles. But if you get something hot and in demand, the Ford Maverick, yours, you bought it for 33 mm -hmm. You could sell it right now for 43 That's $10,000 made on a new vehicle and after putting on roughly, you know, four or 5,000 kilometers, that's pretty sweet. So in the automobile industry, there's always two sides of the, the you know, it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. If something's really hard to get your hands on, oh, that's not fun. That's a, a low. That's a negative. Well, you're going to have something really positive on the other side. It's worth a fortune if you use it a bit and then just sell it, you know, use it six months, use it a year. 
First Bronco sold it for more than what we paid and we had paid MSRP. Second Bronco paid MSRP. Some people have told, have said, oh, only idiots. I had a comment. I loved it. Only idiots pay MSRP on new. Well, this idiot made money twice. Well, the second one cost 2,500 <laughs> for 14 months. And at that price at a hundred and you can't even get a used vehicle that ends up costing you 150 bucks. Cause even if you buy a $3,000 vehicle, and you try to keep it for 14 months, you're gonna put a few thousand dollars in repairs or maintenance into it, or it'll just be scrap at the end. Yeah, I guess right now people who buy used car, it's more because it's available right now. <laughs> when you buy a new, you need to wait. It's an order sometimes. If it's popular, if yeah, it's very but popular. At the same time, if you speak with people who always buy new cars, they will say, okay, my car is guaranteed. Uh, nothing will break yet, <laughs> so. It depends on what you want. Do you want a car right now or do you want, are you able to wait, but you want a full guaranteed car that you won't have trouble uh, to start? Peace of mind. Great yeah. point on the new vehicle. <laughs> yeah, peace of mind with a new vehicle now. And with the lease, it's easy. If you don't love the car, you just give the key back at the end. That's right. And if you are paying, if you have cash, if you've got some cash on you, Consider how much cash, <laughs> because if you can <laughs> buy out entirely a vehicle, well, you don't want to have, if you're like, yeah, I've got cash on me, I've got 3000, I can buy cash, a used vehicle. Well, beware, a $3,000 used vehicle can be a whole lot of headaches. It might run for two weeks and then the engine might blow. Very, and it could also last four years and you don't put a cent in for four years, but those cases are very rare because what used to be, you know, you used to be able to find a good used vehicle for two, $3,000. That was, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Well, now a good, that same, you know, type of vehicle is 10 to $15,000. So really ho ha important to, to keep that in mind. So Ford Video Guy says, I arrived at my resort. I'm going to get food and hang out with other speakers at the conference. Uh, fantastic. Well, <laughs> I'm happy that you'll be watching later. Thank you so much, uh, Ford Video Guy. Now, I'd say if you're going to buy used and you're going to pay all cash, get something that's $15,000 or more. You will save interest and that is definitely something to consider. But if you can get a good, reliable new vehicle with two or 3% interest, that's my number one recommendation. Finance it. If I have $100,000 sitting, it, well, here's an example. We've got some channel news and we're going to be buying a vehicle and we've got the choice pay for it cash or pay 7% interest. And I'd rather pay 7% interest and invest my money, really truly hoping that the world doesn't nearly end with this potential digital currency situation and hoping the stock market does rebound. If it doesn't, I'm gonna feel pretty darn silly, but we'll have to wait and see. No one can predict the future. So let's get into some more photos here. So that's what's going on now talking about they're talking about some important news because we'll just conclude if you're going to pay cash a used vehicle get something that's worth it you know 15 to 20 thousand dollars but there is a bit of a used vehicle crisis there's less used vehicles on the market and really where there are a lot of used vehicles that are missing from the market it's those quality five to fifteen thousand dollar vehicles really hard to get those quality five to fifteen thousand dollar vehicles in large numbers the prices on them have skyrocketed what used to be a good vehicle at three thousand dollars now requires ten to fifteen thousand dollars so at that point my advice would be probably the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range for an suv is your safe range for something that's pretty reliable have it inspected if you buy from a dealer, if it's you know a major brand dealer, you're probably a little safer than buying it from just a little used car lot because the little used car lots are generally picking things up at auction. Now there's some very good little used car lots because they'll pick them up from auction, they'll fix them up and then sell them. And there's others that are just gonna give them a wash and wax outside, really wash the inside, make it smell good get your emotions running and get you out the door with that vehicle as fast as possible because they know it's going to break or they just didn't inspect it and they don't care 
because they just, you know, they're there to flip a vehicle quick and make some money. So beware of that. That's my big advice. Be really, really weary of that. Now for a used vehicle, I think that used price range, if it's a truck, if it's an SUV, 20 to 30,000, you got some good ones at 15, but you got to be more careful and under 15, you really start to play with fire and maybe the vehicle will end up with a fire. For trucks, you got to be kind of in the 25,000 plus range. So I'd say a used truck, two, three-year-old, four, max five-year-old truck is fine. Sometimes you come across that rare gem that's 10 or 15 years old and barely ever worked, but still was very well maintained. It happens, but you need to have those dealer, not invoices, but the dealer um, service receipts. You need to have all those service receipts, go through all the service receipts and make sure the vehicle was well maintained and you could look over, use Google, find out what are the common problems with that model and look to see if they were fixed or not. So let's actually go, we'll go on to concluding. That concludes that episode. So if you buy used, get the vehicle inspected, check it out. I'd be more towards getting a three or four year old used vehicle, but I'd be more inclined if I can pay a good, at least a quarter to a half of the price of the vehicle or have my trade pay off half of the vehicle. So we avoid those high interest rates, unless you have a low interest mortgage rate now and can pay it off using that interest on your mortgage. But remember, if in two, three years you're redoing your mortgage, it might be going up to you know five or six or 7%. So just beware of that. So let's just cover the, our personal news. So little mini episode here. Why are we selling our 2022 Mustang GT? Well, this vehicle has one of the, it's very good in regards to depreciation, but it has some interest on it. And we're looking right now, we're going to be big time at a big time loss in the Lightning. And I we like the Lightning way too much to take a loss on it. So the plan was to trade the Lightning for the Bronco. But very much likely now, just because I like change and I like to experience new things and bring new things to the channel, we've done a lot of videos here on the Mustang GT. We think it's one of the best. I think it's the best sports car for the money. It sounds incredible. It's got a pretty unbelievable sound. I think it sounds a lot better than a Porsche 911, no matter what Porsche 911 we're talking about. And I've even heard some really high, I love like the Porsche 911 GT3 is a mind-blowingly amazing car. It looks so cool, incredible handling. It's, it, it's mind-blowing, folks. But this thing has got it when it comes to sound. But there's something that beats it out. So something that beats it out, we went shopping for a Shelby. So 2016 Shelby, we had a few choices. We could have gone all yellow, $60,900. But you always got to think, what's the resale? Whether you're buying new or used, resale is so important. So right there, $60,900 Canadian dollars, not bad, but 53,400 kilometers. So when you're looking at a Shelby, mileage is very important. And that is high mileage for, well, it's pretty normal mileage for a Shelby, but makes it a little harder to resell. So what we're probably getting, well, what I've confirmed to get, as long as the person's going to, you know, deliver, we are getting a 2016 Ford Mustang Shelby GT350 with the 5.2 liter V8 Voodoo engine. Could pay it cash. But we're going to finance. Uh, That's we're gonna, a long name. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put about half of it down as cash and put the other half in the stock market, hoping things go up in, within the next eight months, as opposed to I'm hoping the stock market will only go down for another two to four months and hoping come fall, the stock market really starts to rebound. Hopefully we don't have any of that digital currency nonsense going on. We'll have to wait and see. The other option, you can also make money with vehicles, buying older vehicles. You spot a good deal like a Mercedes 500 SL for 13,500. Very well aware that things can be expensive like the shocks. You can spend about $2,000 per shock. So going around the vehicle at about $8,000 Canadian, but you can also just put aftermarket shocks that are no longer these fancy adjusting shocks like 
The Mustang Shelby has Magna Ride, meaning the shock adjusts to your road condition so you can track it as well as take care of your lady and not shake her to death. We are also looking at Porsches. So we found this wonderful Porsche. So in both these instances, we're looking at vehicles that we could buy, enjoy, give it a good clean inside and out and sell it and not depreciate at all or even make money. Now the Shelby is kind of that happy medium. It's a vehicle, it's got 7,500 kilometers, 7,300 kilometers on it. So we know we're, what we're getting ourselves into. We've got a pretty much a new vehicle. Expect a vehicle all around. The tires are gonna tell a story. The steering wheel is gonna tell a story. You get a used steering wheel on something that's supposed to have, you know, relatively low mileage, you know the mileage has been played with. Get a Carfax. A Carfax will have the vehicle's mileage written off when it went into dealership. You'll know, did it go into dealership? At what kilometers did it go into dealership? If it went in at, you know, 120,000 kilometers and then just the next time it went in, it's got, or now that you're looking at it, it has, you know, 80,000 kilometers or, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 less miles. Well, you know, you've got something you need to mm -hmm. absolutely avoid. Rev Nation, thank you for the... You know, thank you for the saying that the 350 is rad. I was worried. Yeah, I know it hurts not picking up the Bronco, but I can't lose all that money on the Lightning. You found another baby. <laughs> I found something, another baby, and I'll just have to get a Bronco later on. So yeah, got pretty close to getting that. Marie definitely vetoed this. Nope. She said, big old no. At what point do you not like this model? At what point? Quite a bit, eh? It's hard to describe. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not a love hate. Love it's it. just hate. Yeah, it's not love hate. You just hate this it's, model. Like I said to you, it's like if you drive it, you need to have an Hawaiian shirt and have your shaggy out. Gold chain. Gold chain and a um, very a uh, beer a very bad beer belly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I need to be thin <laughs> in the arms, thin in the legs, but have a huge beer the belly. Same for it's, the it's the impression US she gets. Model, but in these years, model, yeah, I see. Oh, the new a model's incredible. We love it. <laughs> yeah, and a, a dirty old uncle, as, as you call it. Now, speaking of vehicles to look into, you need to look to what the market is into. And remember, don't just take this guy's advice on vehicles. <laughs> Love him, very comical, but he's got very strong opinions about vehicles. And if we go to his list of vehicles, you know, I was like, well, what does Jeremy Clarkson think about that Mercedes? Well, it's on his, what, what is this called? Gayest cars. <laughs> the top 10 gayest cars. Now, oh my. we don't have anything against it here. We don't want, you know, Bill C-16 working against us. And throw having a criminal charge against us we're not here to offend anyone sometimes things are just you know well it says it right there well here's the list the smart the jeep wrangler i'm not sure about the jeep wrangler is it gay that much i i the, the, they've covered it over the year for years and years they've said that the jeep wrangler <laughs> is Gay. And I don't care if it's gay. I like it. I, I think it's a cool <laughs> off-road. I especially like their four-cylinder plug-in. There's a hybrid. If it's plug-in, I think then it's really worth it. A pink roll source. Uh, yes. Fair. For sure. Yes. But a Mercedes <laughs> SL 55 AMG, that's basically the Mercedes SL 500 I was looking at. But it, that's not what discouraged me. I couldn't care less um, the perception that a vehicle gives. It's just the V8 on a Mercedes is very cool. They sound good even if you don't modify the exhaust. The new Mini, well, I'd say the, the title is only appropriate if you're driving with another guy and you're glued together and you're attracted to each other. Then the title is appropriate and makes sense. But the BMW Z3 or Z4, Porsche convertible, again, it was on my list. What, what? can I say, folks? And, and I do bicycle. But you know what my opinion is on cyclists. <laughs> I've said it before. I am not a fan of cyclists. They are, you know, freaking annoying guys. They're really freaking annoying guys, those bicyclists. And now I think bicyclists, even when they're walking, 
like to use the same habits. So just today, I saw someone, they must be a cyclist because on a relatively busy road. Cross the road like a deer. <laughs> uh, there was that, but there's also the fact that they're almost in the middle of the mm. lane. It's like, you're walking, this is for vehicles. You know, bicycles, go on your bicycle paths, and get off the road. And they doesn't... Go they look at you like, what are you doing side? driving near me? And you're like, you're in the middle of the lane. I, I'm so I'm completely in the other lane. I could have a head-on collision and you're looking at me like I'm the problem. It's like I think someone's talking here about BMW 3 Series. Uh, that's, you know, any BMW driver, that's another one that'll give you looks when you kind of look at him oddly because he didn't use his blinker and he or she and they drove in front of you. He, she, they, all the everything. <laughs> All that can drive. <laughs> new Skoda and New Beetle. So there's your list, folks. Uh, <laughs> and Peugeot's, yeah, the F, yeah, and Peugeot, the F355 uh, and Jeremy Clarkson. He's got mouthfuls to say on that as well. But you know what, folks? I like the Jeep Wrangler. The only reason we ha Marie didn't have a Jeep Wrangler, we shopped it. Like, we brought it home. We brought home a Gladiator. We brought home two others. I've actually made reviews on three different times on Jeeps that I've only... I made it four times and only produced one. Yeah. And... Rev Nation says Miata is a, li a little too hairdresser for me. I agree, and I don't know why is it. It's not in in his. It list. should be in the list. He's. <laughs> you have a good point. <laughs> he he is an automobile legend and icon, but he's not right about everything because his list definitely needs a Miata as well as <laughs> before a, a Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> a, yeah, my brother has a Mustang convertible GT, and I'm not embarrassed. I'm not I'm never embarrassed, but anyways, we've never been teased about being seen in that vehicle together but his fiat his like 1960s or early early 70s fiat people have definitely made some comments when we are seen driving together it's because we you know you have to drive like this it makes you look like a couple and two guys that are a couple that is the appropriate time to say hey that that looks gay it looks like a gay couple that's when we should use it, not in any hateful manner whatsoever. People are people. Let people be who they are. We're all just trying to find ways to have life be less boring and make us happier. That's why you need a nice car in your front yard. You need a Ranger with a 2.7 liter, a modified exhaust, a lift kit, and some bigger tires. So this happened to Clarkson when he was in his Jeep, and, he, and it made him, you know, wonder why it was on that list so <laughs> just on funny news from this week uh, i came across this and it said when people see my jeep and think i'm rich bro i'm just irresponsible yes jeep people m are like the king and queens of modifying and spending tens of thousands of dollars on That's their big. vehicle it's a little silly but gr guess what Bronco community, we're getting involved into all that. Spend all your hard-earned money on modifications. Um, but we'll find out, you know, will the Bronco ever make that list? I don't, well, who knows? Who knows? We'll have to see. Um, and here for more funny automobile news this week, <laughs> you've got one. the new GMC with the HDMI plugs in the back. And I'd say the silliest thing about the GMC, he doesn't have it, but some of them have a little outline going around the GMC because it's a step that opens up and who takes their ball off, honestly, in the back. W both our trucks have our balls on. And we like to have the balls on our trucks because it protects us against other vehicles. If anyone tries to rear end us, our balls are going to protect us. And that's the way you got to roll, folks. You got to protect your vehicle. Keep your, grab your truck and keep your ball on. <laughs> and Peugeot's like, is that HDMI 2.0? But yeah, that, that, that definitely could work. And you even got a little um, optical plug in the middle. Because uh, he's not keeping his ball in. He's not, uh, his balls aren't protecting him. You know what? Because of you, next week we will see a lot of cars having balls at the back, but it will be the bad ones that we see oh, sometimes. Folks, please. Stop seeing them. Yeah, those, those swinging, We're shiny things. We're talking about the trailer Yeah, stuff. the trailer <laughs> ball that the, the yeah. goes Don't put in. The other kind of yeah, not, not the shaky yeah. ones. That's... <laughs> That's I, oh. yeah, not not cool, not cool at That's all. That's horrible to follow cars like that. You're like, no. get okay, <laughs> yeah, get off the road. So let's cover some quick Ford and 
Ford news with uh, three pieces of important Ford news. So let's start our final episode of the live tonight. We're wrapping the show up, folks. So Ford news that y'all need to know. So we've got a little bit of information here. Ford supplier relations are down. So Ford's relationship with their suppliers have come down. And they were doing pretty good. They're in fourth place. They've come down. And, you know, they've got, let's see who's in front of them now. They've gone into fifth position. So they're behind Toyota, Honda, General Motors, Nissan, but ahead of Stellantis. Now I can say, of course, relationship, you know, the, the supplier relationship is down between Ford and the suppliers. Ford's had a lot of trouble getting supply. So there's probably been a lot of angry phone calls of why didn't, you know, you promised X number of batteries. Why did you only deliver a fourth? Why do some of the batteries not work and we have to send you all the batteries back? What is going on? You know, those aren't nice conversations to have. Your relationships are going to go down if you're having to, you know, ask the same questions over and over for the last two years. Production is going a lot better at Ford because the supplies are actually coming in. So this, they're, they're going to get better points coming up, I think, for 23 and even better in 2024. But their supplier re working relations have gone down. They're relatively high. They're in fifth now, and I expect them to go start going back up in 24, 25. But what might keep them sort of in fifth and maybe even come down to sixth is Ford is really trying to have less recalls. Less recalls means you need to assemble them right the first time. You need to assemble them with the right parts, working parts. So no 2.7 liter uh, valves that go and blow engines. I'm still gonna get a 2.7 liter Ranger engine because the 2.7 liter is very reliable despite having, what was it, maybe 50 blown engines. Ford's made hundreds of thousands of 2.7 liters and a lot of, a heck of a lot of success. And a little, and a few have failed. So you gotta, sometimes you gotta, you know, shake people up a little to get what you need out of them. So I expect this chart might go down a little bit more before it starts to go up because it could take several years to get those recall numbers down. So let's now cover, so right there from Ford Authority, if you wanna read the article, Ford Authority, great article, Ford Supplier Relations deteriorated significantly last year. Brett Foote always has good Good, very good coverage. It's it's real news. It's based on data. It's based on facts. It's not made up based on something he saw in a parking lot. So more news and really exciting news because this is Bronco news. So we've announced that we're going to have the Shelby. As long as we get the vehicle delivered, as long as it's not like a fraud thing, where 2022 Mustang is going out, going by, we're going to say hi to 2016 Shelby GT. Doesn't have track package, but that can be added. Uh, you can add an, uh, transmit, a differential cooler. But, uh, and more important is the transmission cooler that can be added. It's got the tech pack, so we'll have a big touch screen. It's gonna mean that we're gonna wait a little longer to have the Bronco. Use that Ford Lightning more and waiting for a Bronco could actually mean some very exciting news. First of all, we might very well be getting a mid-model refresh for 2024, so that could address maybe the sound system issue. All our little little things that have been bothering us somewhat, thinking that, you know, the Bronco, uh, I think is a fantastic vehicle. Not just mechanically, it looks amazing, and I, I hate how some people have said there's been articles going out recently saying the Ford Bronco looks, it's a great looking vehicle that is trash in every other way. No, we each had one. We love the styling, yes. Yes, we love the styling. 100%. <laughs> but the rest wasn't trash. Our soft top did great in yeah, some of the, the coldest winters. That was bordering you, it was the sound system because the rest just the sound was system. just fine. Yeah. yeah, and we had a very early model. So yeah, there's a few spaces, a uh, place under in the engine bay where there's a cable tie holding our windshield wiper tube. Our back, if you took off the plastic, it wasn't painted. The inside of the doors was missing just a little bit of uh, paint. It had, it had, you know, some paint. It was, it was covered. The paneling was covered, but it wasn't perfect. But our second one pretty much was perfect. And we loved both of them. And they weren't hot trash. They had a hot, a ton of power. We had 
really no no issues except one of our soft tops the back came off part of that was from an Good attempted theft um and we still got free rivets in the back and it made it look more m military some metal rivets in the back so i actually preferred <laughs> it that way so ford treated us extremely well with our bronco we will be getting a min model refresh probably 2024 if not, maybe it'll get pushed off to 2025. But with, what are we going to get with that? Well, here's the thing. Beyond just a little, it, I, I hope they don't change the outside too much. I don't mind if the inside changes a little. I don't mind at all that it's plasticky. It should be. I want to get this vehicle wet. But better sound system would definitely be good. We loved our soft top, the hard top. Maybe they'll do a little bit of improvement in the sense of finally offering us the painted hard top other than on a heritage, but we're looking at getting a work model. So maybe a model for fleet as well as a premium model. So maybe premium will be its own model. I doubt it. I think it may maybe be more of an added trim and we already have the luxury package giving you a bigger sound system. So what could premium be? Well, maybe premium could be a more upgraded interior as it is. We've already recommended here on the channel and other channels as well that the wild track was kind of redundant. And then it got the Haas 3.0. And then I was like, wow, it's no longer redundant. This, it makes sense paying more for a wild track now. It's got Haas 3.0. That's awesome suspension. I, I, awesome steering rack. I want it. I ordered it. I can't have it, but premium. And now it looks like uh, those built past July, mid July, are going to be having sort of like the job two for the Bronco this year. The wild track's going to be in leather. And the base and Big Ben are going to be on marine grade vinyl. Hmm. Very cool. So Tim Bartz at Long MacArthur Ford has an excellent video on that. You can check it out because he deta details it. I'll be detailing it later this week when I really pull out the order guide because I want to cover it right. But from, from what I can tell off a quick glance and watching uh, Tim Bartz Long MacArthur video is that the wild track ha will have leather as standard which it's like, oh, I want that. But we we're going to get built anyways before that. So we were paying more for that. So we'll find out if they incorporate into the price or if there's a price increase. But uh, pretty cool that the Big Ben is going to have marine grade vinyl. That was one of the things we mm -hmm. loved about, the, you loved it loved on the lot. Badlands. <laughs> it's easy to wash. It's easy with the dogs. And if you forget your top uh, on uh, off, I would yeah. say, like it happens the first week that yeah, it you happened have the first the bad lens. Yeah. Uh, even if water is on, had it, too many uh, beers and uh, went, I fell asleep on the couch and uh, yeah, it was a you little wet it. on the inside. I forgot <laughs> it. Yeah. So with leather, you cannot leave it open with the rain. It will be bad. Yeah. <laughs> now premium probably going to be something you can add on to. Uh, let's say maybe Outer Banks, Badlands, and Wild Track. And then you've got the Heritage Plus. So Heritage Plus, you already have that limited model, which you're only making, you know, 1,965 of. You've got sort of the regular Heritage, which is just a black diamond upgraded. But Heritage Plus, maybe it'll kind of sit between the two of you to be a mass-produced luxury model so instead of like a black diamond maybe heritage plus is going to be a spruced up outer banks or a spruced up well the limited model the heritage limited is a spruced up badland so maybe yeah it could very well be a spruced up outer bank so we'll see because this is probably going to happen you know ford authority points out that these specialty models have brought in good money for ford so we can probably continue to see them i'm excited i'm hoping we definitely do see um more models as long as they're their own distinct as long as they're offering something they're solving a problem or offering something more not just for the sake of having a different name so that covers the show for tonight folks i think we have covered it all i'm sorry ford maverick how could we forget part of the big news tonight ford maverick news let's cover a little ford maverick news folks so we've got the scout tuck tuck and uh, Ford Authority is calling it quite affor affordable. I don't know how much they're making per year. Or I, I think it's very cool, but this thing is 16,500 USD, US dollars, 16,500. It is very cool that a Ford Maverick has more payload than a classic Ram 1500. 
you have about 200 extra pounds of payload, about 150 to 200 extra pounds of payload over a classic 1500 RAM. So this thing can take this little uh, Scout Tuck Tuck. <laughs> That's a weird name. <laughs> but it's 16,500, folks. That is not, uh, they're saying it's, you know, quite affordable. Yeah, that's that's right in the background in case n people don't believe me. Go read the article at Ford Authority. So quite affordable at 16,500. I don't know. I I don't if I turn up the couch cushions, I don't think I'm going to find that money, honey. <laughs> you need to keep your Mustang and don't board a shell. I certainly don't have the looks to pick up a quick modeling contract and get 16,500, but the thing does look great. We're a little off topic tonight, but you've got a little sleeping area in the back. Now that's not for and uh, dogs. Dogs are yeah, loving <laughs> and kind. The cage is for children. Children are wild beasts. That's why they have put a cage up here. You cage your child in there and, and you the hope reason. your kid doesn't gnaw the bars. Um, but kids are uh, noisy, smelly, and uh, well, I guess we'll have to get used to that. But it's just for you to don't fall at night. <laughs> Oh, is it now? Or if, if you try to take a nap while I'm driving, you need that just to hold <laughs> yeah. you in. We wouldn't shake you up like that these <laughs> days, that's for sure. So there's your interior. It looks pretty cool. Um, you've got, you know, you can tell there's going to be some closed off casing here so you can have access, probably pull out and, you know, have access to what you'll, you'd need in a little camper. Uh, so we've got... Uh, the Badlands non-Sasquatch is the better value. Yes, I think Badlands non-Sasquatch is an incredible value on the Bronco. And now we've got time to reflect. I want to, when the Bronco Wild Track comes in, I'll get to really try it out. I'll hopefully get to put 30, 40 kilometers on it. Really feel feel for that Haas 3.0. If I feel like it's not worth the extra money, I'm going to go straight back to a Badlands mid-package. That was the mistake, Badlands one. We had to take our gloves off uh, to, you know, take the key out and freeze our hands and no heated <laughs> seats. So I got a few complaints from the lovely lady right here. Yeah, and we have a good news tonight. Speaking of Bronco Badlands, I need to say that four high, four low said is Bronco Badlands Sasquatch is shipped now. Yes. So I wish you a quick delivery soon. <laughs> right on. Right on. So M. Peugeot per, uh, does approve the Haas 3.0 and a uh, very smart man. Uh, respect his opinion. So if he says the Haas 3.0 is good, I believe him. I test drove it and I didn't, you know, I did do a back to back comparison, but I was just on bad main roads, a bad highway. I didn't get to fully try it out. You know, I would love to be able to off road the two. So we need to actually, let's get back to a Bronco off rodeo in New Hampshire. They would now, if they have a 2023 wild track, we just need to sh run to the wild track or all run. You can't try run. It. Yeah. All run, and then we can try it because we still have, we should. They say it's a one year expiry, but I'll call up Ford. Maybe they'll let me squeeze in uh, because we, from purchase date, it's been more than a year from our second Bronco, but maybe they'll, they'll, they'll let us go in. If not, well, I guess we'll just have to see if we can pay. But the Tuk Tuk weighs 634 pounds dry. So that means once you put your stuff in it, it's probably gonna get to about a thousand pounds, but your Maverick can handle it. So very, very cool. Hmm. We could have that at the cottage, throw that right on top we of your to hybrid. Florida, we'll go with that. No. We could save <laughs> a ton of money. Well, even at the cottage. Yeah. You know, we'd have the water there. We could do paddle boarding and some water activities. Mm -hmm. Wake up by the river, head down to the lake, have a picnic. You really want us to board that? <laughs> I think I'd rather... But is it a two-bed person? Because here I see only a twin bed. Well, the material on the bottom is probably for someone sleeping up top and one. then someone to sleep. I bet that either unfolds or maybe you just have limited and sleep space. And you need space. to sleep like that. Yes, you <laughs> like need to sleep. <laughs> it's it's the Scout Tuck Tuck Vampire Edition when you sleep. Doesn't seems large. <laughs> uh, but actually, it camper at 16500 they're saying it's quite affordable because when you think of the little units that you pull, we, I saw them at the, I haven't produced any of that material or edited any of that material, but we, I saw at the show that a lot of those were running for, you know, 25, 30, 35,000 Canadian. And they're little units, about the same space as this. Mind you, you get bigger units also for about $34,000 and have a nice sized unit that you pull with your truck. Now with the Lightning, in the summer, we would just get to the cottage. 
just 150 kilometers and probably we'd probably have about 200 uh, kilometers, 250 kilometers of range when pulling about 5,000 pounds, uh, th- even more, even if we got a 3,500 pound one. So that's the show, folks. Covered all the news we've got to cover for this week. I'll see you uh, tomorrow night over at Tim Bart's Long MacArthur Ford. And, uh, well, I'll be in the chat at uh, All Terrain Nation. Dave over at All Terrain Nation. Uh, thank you, everyone, for making it to the show this evening. Really appreciate all the help that our members offer us. Uh, we'll be going up for another Members Live coming up soon. Uh, within a week or two, we're going to be doing a Members Live because we try to do one every month or two unless I've got really in, real information that I can't really cover on the show here. Well, then when there's an emergency and we've got to share some intel, I definitely do that. Uh, that's the place to do it. Thank you so much, everyone. What do we wish them? Uh, we wish you more cars and more power, but not more cars for you. You already have too much. <laughs> Bye. Take care, folks. Hope you get to put the pedal to the metal. <laughs> Thank you for high, for low. Thanks, everyone. Good night.